turn one soul ring. All right, let's get to the show. We're starting the show, everyone. And welcome. And no more weather talk. <laughs> We're probably, the weather's going to come up. All right? <laughs> it's summer and I'm upset. It's going to come up. But you're listening to another episode of Turn One Soul Ring. I'm Kevin. And I'm Eric. And today on the show, we're going to be starting a new ongoing series. It's our Color Pie series. And don't worry, this isn't going to be a show or a series that we do one after the other. You know, I think that I think we'd all get bored of that. Yeah. So uh, this is just going to be a series that gets peppered in throughout the show's run. And as we always do, we're going to do this in Wooburg order. So stay tuned for uh, our next Color Pie series episode on blue. But today we're doing white. Lucky white. Lucky white. Always gets to go first. Best color in the game. Wouldn't that be great if like, I think that should be a rule in Commander where if you're playing mono white, you should just get to go first because you're at a distinct disadvantage. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. (laughs) You're like, I'm playing mono white every week now. (laughs) Uh, before we get to the main topic of the show today, we're going to cover a piece of magic news like we always do. Uh, we're a little bit late to the show on this one, but we're going to talk about the um, last banned and restricted announcement. Yeah. They banned Bridge from Below and Modern, and they banned Paradox Engine and Iona Shield of Amiria in Commander, and they unbanned Painter's Servant. Yay. So, Eric, did you get a chance to play? Yeah, yay. Um, you know, a little bit of yay, a little bit of nay. Um, did you get a chance to play against the Hogak, uh, was it Hogak Bridgevine Dag? Is that what the, that's what it was called? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I did not. Okay. I did watch a little bit of... Um, coverage? A little coverage, yeah. There's like a something with, uh, I think it's with Wizards, they do like Team Modern Super League. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, so um, I did see Hogak get played in that. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty dirty deck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think, you know, like I was saying before, it, it's always nice when they don't, or you were saying that it's nice when they don't just outright ban the card that really makes the deck hum. Yeah, you know? like it was, um, like obviously like Bridge is a big part of like what makes Hogak work as well. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. Hogak's like the brand new card that we all saw and that's mm-hmm. why the deck kind of surfaced. Right. And then so them not just banning that like brand new card is nice because then it, and it's, like if you like open packs and you open the Hogak, you're like, well, especially banned. Like, yeah, especially because it was so cheap at, um, on release and yeah. pre-release. Yeah. And then it just skyrocketed in price. Like, that wouldn't feel good if you were scrambling to put that deck together and then your Hogan your just gets banned. banned. Yeah. Bridge from Below just got a reprint in Ultimate Masters, so I think the card itself was already um, not on the downturn, but was just less expensive. Yeah. But yeah, Bridge was what really made that deck disgusting. Yeah, no. Because with the with the bridge, when it enters, um, you just got all the zombie tokens, and you can use the zombie tokens to then obviously cast the Hogak. Right. To then yeah. repeatedly sack and mill your opponent. Yeah, so. Alter of Dementia being modern legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously that definitely makes the deck not as good. But um, still but still playable. It's still playable. Hogak, yeah. I mean, you can probably still cast Hogak on turn, like, with milling and stuff like turn two turn three yeah no that's no a doubt giant eight eight like that's it's scary that's difficult to deal with yeah um for sure well I, you know i guess you could always just pat the exile it yes yeah pat the exile is like, a good card like everyone always does well at least white blue control always does it with my war and coil engines yeah so i can't get any value Thanks. whenever i play whenever i'm playing white blue it's like i feel like my worm coils let's just sideboard them out because they always just get pathed instantly but they're just going to pass something else. So at least they, at least you know it's, it's like, just like, okay, they're going to have to use the, the path hit. on this. And then it's it's fine. Yeah. You have to think about it that it's it's a trade, right? You're not losing the Worm Coil engine. They're losing the path. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the um, Hogak was just such a super powerful deck that came out of nowhere. And it's like, if that deck was how it was when we had like a, um, a Pro Tour or something like that. Yeah. Sorry, Mythic, whatever they are uh mythic f- mythic fest magic fest <laughs> magic fest <laughs> uh but yeah that you would just see that deck a lot and being running rampant and stuff like that because it was just so good and you're like why wouldn't mm. i play why wouldn't i just play that deck yeah 
And then it's just a bunch of mirror matches in a tournament, and that really doesn't look good for coverage. No. Nobody wants to Not see that it. coverage has been the best as of recent, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I totally agree. But I don't think anybody wants a re- repeat of the, the uh, standard of Mirrodin no. years ago. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> so in uh in our commander format yeah they they uh they unbanned painter servant which is a card that th- that was one on the ban list like many others that i wasn't convinced needed to be on the ban list sure yeah and paradox engine uh was banned and iona shield of emiria was banned now iona i never seen played that many times i think in my you know, three to four years playing Commander, I've only seen it played once. And I think maybe it was unbanned because, or maybe it was banned because Painter Servant was unbanned and those two cards have an interaction where you just lock everybody out of the game. But you're also locking yourself out of the game. So I don't really know how that would work. As far as Paradox Engine goes, I don't know that that card needed to be banned you know i don't I, like i'm an advocate for for fewer bannings in the commander format and even taking some cards off the ban list cards like biorhythm i don't really think needs to be on there and a few others but paradox engine does need to be built around and it's not there there are a lot of other cards that are very very powerful that are not banned so what do you think about the what do you think about the recent bannings one, one of the funny things about this actually is we did an episode of our um uh, what do we call them salt De- inducing cards oh yeah both these cards were on my list they were you're right they were yeah it's pretty funny it's funny yeah <laughs> i had nothing to do with this <laughs> No, I'm uh, sure. I'm sure we have little to no influence yeah. on the commander format at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, with these bannings, like there's so many powerful cards running around in the commander format because it's just it's, it's one of the formats that's like completely open, right? Yeah, you can play with you know twenty thousand plus cards. Yeah, and it's like I understand Paradox Engine. It's it's an easier tool to make a combo with. Yeah. And there's a lot of cards because then it just like untaps everything all the time. And you just have like mana dorks and stuff and you can just like run through your deck. No doubt it's, it's a, a powerful card. It's a big piece in like a lot of combos and it's easy to easy to combo with. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like like you were saying, there's a lot of cards out there that are just powerful as well that we still have in the format. And, you know, we think about a card like Upheaval, which is banned in Commander. And uh, I don't know the mana cost is that offhand um five or six or six yeah i think it's six and it's return all permanence to owner's hands you know that's a devastating card yeah if you get if you can play that and if you can rebuild first that is a very very devastating card like if you could teferi's protection and then upheaval that's fantastic it's a great play yeah but the thing about a spell is it can be countered right so and if it can't be be countered it can be exiled on the stack so, you know, there are ways to deal with a lot of these spells and having to exile a spell on the stack is very much a corner case. Most of the time we can counter these big spells that people play. So I don't think that banning them is the answer. And, you know, the but also ar- like if we're talking about countering stuff, are we just always supposed to play blue? Because that's the only way to counter spells. Yeah, unless you want to play like Null Brooch in all your decks, which is I think uh, I think it's a four mana artifact, and then you can pay four, discard your hand, counter target non creature spell. So it's it's a negate <laughs> on a stick. But if you're playing a, a... a Kozilek deck or any other colorless sure, commander yeah. deck, that's a great that's actually a yeah. great card because once you don't have any cards in hand, oh it doesn't you, matter, you can doesn't matter whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially with Kozilek, you just cast them again, and then you can just draw all those cards. Right, yeah. you draw seven cards when you cast them if you have no cards. Um, <laughs> No, I'm not saying play blue. I'm saying sometimes you get hit with an upheaval. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you play blue. Sometimes sometimes you don't. It's just that these cards, I think, are not cards that 
we're seeing in a casual format very often. And by and large, the people that play Commander do it in a casual setting. So we're not seeing Iona's and we're not seeing, well, a people's band, but we're not, we're not even seeing, you know, Paradox Engine. You know, I've like, definitely seen Paradox Engine. I've, like that's... I've seen it, but I've, but it's way more ubiquitous in a competitive format. Yeah. Uh, in competitive commander. So it's like Iona, I think is the one that surprises me more. Yeah, that is very surprising because it did not see a lot of play. Yeah, it just did not see a lot of play. And you're like, okay, I want to unban Painter Servants. So I'm going to ban Iona. Like, and the vast majority of decks are not monocolored. Yeah. So it just doesn't really... I think that's why Iona didn't see a ton of play. It just didn't have enough of an effect. I think if you're running it, it's kind of like, all right, I can shut down a color sometimes. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think it's very much a corner case. Um you know, I th- I think the arguments that that the rules committee made for banning these cards um, and Paradox Engine in particular is that if you have a Paradox Engine, you cast a Paradox Engine. It's much more likely that you're going to win that game if that's part of your win condition, right? I think that's how you built your deck around. And I think if you're just throwing a Paradox Engine into your deck for a little bit of extra value, but it ends up it it means that it's going to make your turns multiply in time that's not you're you you are creating a bad experience paradox engine it's not paradox engine's fault you've built your deck in a way that doesn't utilize it to the point where it can win games because paradox engine is a card that helps you win games so and and like another thing i'd like to point out is that um they're saying it like if we're using Paradox Engine to win, it's like I get that out and then I can make a combo and stuff like that. Um, and yes, uh, in my example here, Paradox Engine, you can win a lot earlier on turns, mm-hmm. but it's still a, a single spell that's getting you to win the game compared to still like casting a big mana spell where people are low enough, like Exsanguinate. You're just like, oh, I cast this and I win. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay. Or Torment of Hailfire, that's another one. Yeah, right? Yeah. And those spells exist. You do need bigger mana for that, but... We have tons of mana ramp in Commander. And, and stuff, we have so tons like... of ways to get infinite amounts of mana. Yeah. There are many ways to do that. And those, like, you know, like Palancron's gotten a lot of, of um, well, let's ban this card yeah. talk surrounding it. Yeah. Um, I think I hate Palancron a lot more than Paradox Engine. <laughs> yeah. You, well, usually when someone plays a Palancron, they just won the game. Yeah. You're like, oh, infinite mana. GG. Yeah. Um, so... <sighs> You know, it's it's just whatever way you play the game, if that's the way that you have fun playing it, whether you want to play a super janky deck or a super competitive deck, I think it's up to us as players to find or create the meta in which we can play those decks and have fun. And, you know, when the rules committee says this is fun, that's not fun, I think they're not really being realistic about how much this game has changed over the years since its inception because it's gotten so big and so diverse that it's not about any single player or any single meta or any single deck. And, you know, that's why I think a lot of cards, maybe not a lot, but several of the cards on the ban list shouldn't be there. Yeah, totally. I agree with that. Yeah. So. Give me Tolarian Academy. Uh, that's another card that i don't think is that that broken i mean there's there's a lot of card i think like grizzle branch would probably be on there like that's a very yeah it doesn't matter when you start at 40 health like that that is an example of a card that was printed without commander in mind commander in mind yeah and you know we'll see what happens maybe they'll maybe they'll unban it but you know i just always say i hate to see bannings i always prefer to see unbannings especially in commander and there's so many ways to deal with threats and um yeah also the other thing we didn't talk about is all the all the value of paradox engine you know oh, yeah. for all of you that bought a paradox engine at 50 plus dollars you know i'm sorry for your loss yeah it's just all gone now yeah uh yeah i've just got four of them in a binder now yeah just 
<laughs> just chilling. So like, okay, um, maybe and, it'll get unbanned again. And you know, there's, <laughs> uh, you know, if if you want to have a paradox engine type of effect, just play um, Isochron Scepter with uh, dramatic reversal imprinted on it. So I mean, paradox engine that means you got to play blue. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, but you know, if you're playing blue, that probably just means you're gonna win more games. You have lots of combo potential, right? So that's and, like and what Paradox Engine was about. And lots of infinite mana potential. Yeah. And you know, the game's got to end sometime. It does, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like, again, with these card bannings, um, if you have like a like-minded group, you guys kind of know like your power levels that you're playing with and stuff like that. Um, and when you go out, you know, I have definitely gone to our like LGS and there's a couple guys that are like, all right, like, what are the, what's the kind of like estimated power level of these decks we're playing? You know, like, just so you can kind of play like more even games. Yeah, just communicate. Yeah, communicate. Uh, yeah, you know, because you can only tell so much by someone's commander, and yeah, you know, if you're if you're playing a five, just yeah, say, say you're playing a five. Exactly. If you're playing like a balls to the wall competitive deck, you know, playing a nine or a ten, just say that. You know? And then there's less bad feelings. That too, right? Wh- when the game, when the game's happening, and when the game is over. Yeah. And that's the important thing, because you just want people coming back for more. We want to play more Magic. That's right. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the rules committee comes up with next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another interesting thing about the commander format is it's that it's very interesting that it's not run by Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, because even Wizards does bannings on like Popper. Yeah, well they do now. They yeah. do now. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, they do bannings on every other format. Yeah, just not commander. And I guess like ninety three, ninety four. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I just... that's, a, that's a little. That's a. I think that's a that's very a, niche. That's, a, that's out of my element. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, I'm not even sour about the, I'm not sour about the value. I'm I'm sour about the rules committee saying the way you play isn't fun. Yeah, you're playing Paradox Engine, you are unfun. You're unfun. And you know, you're I'm, a fun Nazi. We're here to tell you that if, however you're playing, even if you play Stacks or Chaos, if you have fun doing it, keep doing it. Yeah. Because that's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the main topic of the show because that was about 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to be talking about white today, all things white. And we're going to start with talking about white's representation in the color pie. We did talk about this briefly on the first episode of the show when we talked about deck building and how different colors have different strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, kind of like touched on all that little stuff. Now is where we can dig into the meat of this pie. Yeah, we're getting, yeah, the the fat of the milk. Sure. That's right. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> so like the other colors that make up the color pie, white signifies an ideological faction whose culture defines the flavor and gameplay of its cards as well as its relations with the other colors. White has its own means and motivations for doing battle in magic like all the other colors. Some of those are peace, law, structure, selflessness, and equality. Each of these tie into White's strengths, weaknesses, and unique mechanic. Uh, mechanics. White places value in the group, the community, and its civilizations as a whole. White's ultimate goal is peace, which is interesting in a game where we're trying to kill each other. Sometimes you need a war to have peace. That's right. That's... There's actually, uh, I don't know if you were an X-Files fan, but no. there was, a, no. <laughs> I did not watch. <laughs> There's this episode, it was in like the later seasons, but I don't think Mulder had been abducted by aliens yet. Okay. And there was, a, it was one of those Monster of the Week episodes and there was a genie and she would you would make a wish but you wouldn't make it specific enough so bad things was, would end yeah, up happening sure. like that brendan fraser movie bedazzled yeah and Mulder wished for world peace and then he went outside and everybody was gone <laughs> nice. so you know it's like it's that good. that's one way to get peace oh yeah right just have you know that's one way to get rid of conflict essentially is get rid of humans 
get rid of get rid of everything yeah yeah no no problem <clears throat> Uh, yeah, well, staying on the subjects of white's representation in the color pie, let's talk about some common misconceptions about the color. Uh, I think a common misconception is that white stands for good, and compared to a lot of black or red cards, you could assume that. Yeah. But there have been several white antagonist figures throughout magic stories, such as Ellis Norn, Nahiri... Takenshi Konda from the Kamigawa block, n- to name a few. Do you know, I mean, I know the whole Phyrexian thing, but do you know the lore of Nahiri in Shadows of Innistrad? I do. Okay, cool. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because there's the whole Through the Breach thing, that new art where she's bringing Emrakul yeah. through. Like, I love, oh, I would so love to good. have a print of that. <laughs> that would be amazing. I love, em- Emrakul's so cool looking. But, uh, so basically it was... Uh, who was it? Soren. Soren and Nahiri have a bit of a yeah a tiff. And so um, Nahiri's plane, which is because she's from Commander twenty thirteen originally. Yeah. Is it Zendikar? I think she's originally from Zendikar. Yeah, it looks. And like so it. we recently had this in the story where Zendikar ended up getting um, completely destroyed because Zendikar is where the El- Eldrazi were first. Yeah. Yeah. And so they just ravished that plane. Mm-hmm. And that was um this is the one thing I can't remember. It was, it was something to do with Soren's doing. Hmm. Soren had a, a part to play. I can't remember if he like locked Nihiri away or what happened with that. Um, but then we see later on Nihiri wants to bring chaos to uh Soren's home plane because In of Estrad. what he did with Zendikar. Nice. I like revenge. And so Nihiri we have with Shadows of Renistrad is bringing Big Mom or Amakul over to... So that's why she's the Harbinger. Yes. I like it's, that. It's Nahiri bringing over, so... Pretty cool. Like yeah, she's very cool. <laughs> really cool revenge story. If you uh, if you do like the lore of magic, I would definitely go... That was a recent thing we had. Um, yeah. Just a couple years ago, and it's like, it's a really cool story. Awesome. Yeah, super cool. So, you know, these characters, like... I think like most characters in most stories, they... They... Th- they they think what they're doing is right right whether or not it's whether or not it's good or evil right like good and evil it's all a point of view it's all about perspective yeah and you know therefore white doesn't always stand for good but in these characters minds that we've talked a little bit about they think they're doing the right thing mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you know they're taking it to the extreme and like any ideal taken to the extreme, it can cross the line of morality. And, you know, like like fascism is a good example of that. Like, you know, Nazi Germany. Yeah. They thought they were doing the, the right, right thing. thing. Yeah. And sometimes that's what that looks like. And we have history to look back on for yeah. that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, or like a movie reference, we have uh, iRobot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're just like gonna keep all humans inside because humans hurt each other. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, that, or that. I mean, not as much of a a, a connection, but that episode of the X Files. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Where you just get rid of everybody. Get rid of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a bit of what white represents in the color pie. Uh, let's let's talk about some of white's strengths in the color pie. Sure. So White's strengths lie in two main areas, its ability to handle laws and its organization. White's ability to organize allow, allows it to grow efficiently, and this can be seen with certain in-game differences, like cards like Leonin Sky Hunter, which is too white for a 2-2 Cat Knight Flyer, and Foul Imp, which is the same mana cost, too black for a 2-2 Flying Imp, but when Foul Imp enters the battlefield, you lose two life. So White's creature is obviously more efficient. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, you could see that as more organized, more concerned with the collective, right? Like you and your like you as a planeswalker and your various creatures or planeswalkers that you're commanding, versus this creature that's this black creature that's, you know, taking a little bit of your life. Yeah. And White also has very efficient removal spells you know we've got path to exile swords to plowshares 
you know, like one of the oldest cards in Magic's history. Yeah, just a single mana just to get rid of something. Exiled. Yeah, exiled, yeah. no questions asked. It's gone. There is uh, a benefit to the player that controlled the exiled creature, but usually it's it's not equal to what they've lost. And White also has access to the best, the best wraths in the game, the yeah. best board clears, like, you know, the original Wrath of God, destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Originally it said bury, <laughs> <laughs> which just means they can't be regenerated. Um, and other colors, they just can't do what white can do in that area with the same ease and mana efficiency. So moving on to white's ability to handle laws, uh, that's sort of shown in all the cards that white has that have stacks effects. Yeah, so, if, you're playing, tax effects. if you're playing a stacks deck, you're probably playing white. Definitely. <laughs> it's a good chance. Yeah. So all the cards that make spells cost more or limit the amount of spells you can play in a game or does white have any cards that stop you from untapping a certain amount of permanence? I don't think so. But it's very blue. It's very blue or artifacts. Or artifacts. A lot of artifacts yeah. do it. The orbs. Yep. Um, but, you know, there's cards like Rule of Law that uh, it's two and a white for an enchantment, which just got reprinted in M20. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Or Spirit of the Labyrinth, it's one and a white for an enchantment creature spirit. 3-1 from, or is that Born of the Gods? I think so. Each player can't draw more than one card each turn. That, yeah. that can be so backbreaking in it Commander. It can be. Yeah. But it also just like sounds like White just wants to have a fair game of Magic. And like we <laughs> and, I, and uh, I, think, I've, I don't know if it's going to make it into the show, but at the, at the top of the show, we were talking about how White is at a distinct disadvantage yeah. um, among the colors. And, you know, we're going to get to White's, White's weaknesses, but we wanted to cover the strengths first just so you wouldn't turn the episode off and take all the White out of all your decks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Another strength that uh, white possesses is its ability to create a vast number of creatures through token production, allowing it to outnumber its opponents. I think green is probably a stronger token producer, but white is a, a close second. White is, say. yeah, white, even like, um, we even see it from uh, the gods that were in um, the Theros block. Amon Ket. Oh, in Amon Ket. Yeah, because they go Ketra. Oh, Ketra. Yeah, and, it's making and, tokens and stuff, and like that's everyone's getting together and like. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the new God Eternal Oketra, yeah, yeah, she makes um she makes four fours. Yeah, zombies. <laughs> four four zombies and uh, Parhelion too, makes four four angels. Yeah, that's a good one. Card spicy. And uh, was uh, isn't it Divine Visitation that turns your yeah. one ones into four fours? Yeah. It turns any token. That you, you would produce. So if you four, produce four like angel. a zero one plant, you get a four four angel. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Yes, white is very good at tokens. Uh, so white is is sort of an enchantment color. It's very good with enchantments, but it also has the ability to destroy enchantments and artifacts. Um, it less so now. Like when uh, in the early days, white could equally destroy artifacts and enchantments but in the intervening years watsi has moved away from that and they've given artifact destruction more to red and green yeah and obviously we know that green can destroy enchantments easily and red is strictly artifacts yep yeah. artifacts and damage <clears throat> yeah, like ancient grudge is a good example of that what is ancient grudge uh, it's one of anything and red to destroy target artifact, and you flash it back for green. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, white's ability to deal with um, enchantments and artifacts is also mirrored in its ability to tutor for them. You know, like white has the most spells that can tutor for specifically artifacts, enchantments, equipments as well. White's very much an equipment color. And you know going on that subject enchantress is also a very powerful archetype in white mm -hmm. <clears throat> enchantress is usually white green and with the release of c18 last year it's bant 
but probably yeah. one of the um cards i find very white is the aura of silence is one of anything too white for an enchantment yes and then artifacts enchantment spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast and you can sack the aura of silence to destroy target artifact or enchantment mm -hmm. so it has the stacks on it it has the artifact enchantment removal on it this is very very white yeah, oh, I love very flavorful silence. and everything we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good, and you know, piggybacking on that, the the artifact and enchantment destruction. That's something that uh, white can also do. Very much on the flip side, white is very capable of mass incursion oh, yeah. of artifacts and enchantments with cards like open the vaults, replenish, and roar of reclamation. So open the vaults is four and two white for a sorcery. Return all artifact and enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So obviously this is this can be beneficial for your opponents, but you're putting this in a deck where you've built around it and it's going to be so much more beneficial for you that you know an opponent's gonna get a, a soul ring or a a lightning greaves you know or a ristic study you yeah know, right even if i get like two or three things you're probably getting back like 10 you're rebuilding your board yeah yeah so this card is i think this card is underplayed and very very good yeah replenish on the other hand is re really good that's why it's like 80 dollars. it's three and it's also reserve list reserve list that's also why it's 80 dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it's three and a white for a sorcery return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to play so just you. You're the only one getting the value off that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is just enchantments too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's pure enchantress. But when you're playing enchantress, you're not playing artifacts. You know, yeah. like in my enchantress, my one enchantress deck, I run a creeping corrosion because, which is destroy all artifacts because I don't run. I, I run like a soul ring. Yeah. That's it. I don't even run a lightning greaves because I'm playing Voltron and I don't want my commander to have shroud and roar of reclamation is five and two white so it's pretty steep but each player returns all artifact cards from his or her graveyard to play hmm. i didn't even know that was a card yeah this is really great in sram after a vandal blast or shadow storm something like that where all your equipments are gone and you just return them all to the field and well you don't get to draw cards because sram is a cast trigger but still, yeah it's it can yeah be, and it's only it's only one more than open the vaults so <clears throat> yeah yeah absolutely right and it's like dirt cheap this card is wicked cheap nice <laughs> i think <laughs> it's like 25 cents <laughs> uh so white is also one of the top tier colors for indiscriminate land destruction mm. with cards like armageddon catastrophe and ravages of war yeah so just mass land destruction armageddon classic three and a white for a sorcery destroy all lands great love this card <laughs> love it <laughs> <laughs> catastrophe is four and two white this one's a little lesser known for a sorcery destroy all lands and or all creatures creatures destroyed this way cannot be regenerated so you have an option with this one hey then we know about uh modal yeah modal cards good cards They're this is a good. very early modal card yeah yeah urza saga yeah i like the art on that one too yeah it's just like uh like a lady running away well yeah. they're all running away yeah they, they're all running away the pack of them but uh just like the oil kind of like style of painting to it what's the artist on there uh it is andrew robinson nice right on like it and ravages of war which is three and a white for a sorcery destroy all lands it's just uh it's, it's armageddon it's just armageddon but this is a portal card i believe like that set symbol is not the actual set symbol i, I do believe this was a portal uh one of the portal set cards gotcha <clears throat> that's why it's kind of expensive yeah it's on the more expensive end um you know if you played any amount of magic you know that white is very capable of life gain life linking life linking yes that's a very popular white mechanic and white also has a lot of fog type effects or just damage pre prevention like damage in more of the early days of magic white could redirect damage 
And white also has a lot of protection abilities, giving things protection with the whole circle of protection cards. So I think like circle of protection, you know, there's like circle of protection artifacts and then one for each of the colors. Yeah, red, blue, and et cetera. And it's one white for an enchantment. You pay two the next time an artifact source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. So not really efficient cards for commander, no. certainly. But Mother of Runes, on the other hand. Or Giver of Runes. Or the new Giver of Runes. Which can protect you from colorless. Yeah. But cannot protect herself. Mm-hmm. That's the trade-off. They couldn't make her... They couldn't make just a better Mother of no, Runes. No, you God, can't do God that. forbid. <laughs> <laughs> Too broken and modern. They're like, can't do it. Yeah, I wonder if that card's seen in modern play. The white blue control. Um, Is it permanent or creature that it gives protection? Oh, that I can't remember. <clears throat> Me neither. Um, but yeah, like it's, uh, I don't think it's seen that much play. Like I don't think blue white control really needs that at all. They don't have too many things on the battlefield to keep around. Right. Yeah. And another thing that white is really good at is, uh, I think, I think white actually has the most cards that prevent creatures from attacking or blocking cards like pacifism or arrest or yeah. that do that. And white also has, you know, just like blue, a lot of cards that tax your opponents for a- attacking you or Planeswalkers you control. Like Sphere of Safety is, is you and Planeswalkers you control. But Ghostly Prison, you know, you have to pay two for each creature. It's just a color-shifted propaganda. Yeah. That costs... No, it costs three, Ghostly Prison. I'm pretty sure. Ghostly Prison is three, yeah. Yeah. Also, Giver of Ruins is just creature. And I think Mother of Ruins is a creature. Well. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. creature. That would be, yeah. That'd be too good. Yeah. Target land. <laughs> get your uh, well yeah I was going to say get your strip mine out of here I just scour from existence to strip mine and then you can't do anything about there it there you go <laughs> scour from existence is like my go to in decks that can't deal with enchantments yeah like, like blue or red or black I mean it's expensive but it's still an answer yeah instant speed spine of ish saw is also really good yeah and meteor golem if yeah you can cheat it into play yes all good Ooh, options yeah, yeah. I think Meteor Golem actually just got reprinted in M20. Is it in M20? It is, yeah. I didn't even oh. realize. I must have totally missed it because I was like, yeah. the artifacts are fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally missed that one. So let's, uh, we've talked about some of the strengths. Let's talk about some of White's weaknesses. And these are actually, I'm surprised at how short this list is compared to the strengths. Sure. I thought it was going to be longer. I mean, maybe my list isn't, you know expansive enough but but i mean also there's a couple of them in there that are a very big um weaknesses yeah yes very yeah. large so yeah i think we didn't get too much into the cards so if you know you've again if you've played uh, a fair bit of commander you know that white's two biggest weaknesses are card draw and mana ramp and that's huge it's very huge i'd say less so for mana ramp because i think that red and blue are in a similar category for relying on artifacts to ramp red maybe a little bit less so because it has so many ritual effects yeah but i'd say that blue and white are in the same category for mana ramp blue has a lot of has a few infinite mana combos but blue you just like draw more cards with though so they're just like you'll always hit your land you drop. always hit your land drops yeah <laughs> and you know with cards like ter- terrain generator which you can put in any deck let let you put um basic lands into play you know there are cards that let you just put lands into play that are are lands or are colorless yeah. so you can get around those things but card draw is definitely uh, a big one for blue uh we've gotten cards like smothering tithe which is helped us with white's mana ramp recently but we're still struggling with card draw you know if you want to build a mono white deck and you know when i build a deck ideally i like to have either card draw or mana ramp on my commander built in yeah so i always have that eighth card in my hand that can do that thing that i need my deck to do but you know if in white mono white if you want to do that you kind of you're Option is like SRAM, and that's, that's it. And then that locks <laughs> you into an entire strategy that is not a strategy that wins 
a large portion of the time. Like Voltron is fun. I love playing Voltron, but it's not a strategy that's going to win you games probably even 25% of the time. Yeah. So it's very, White's card draw is very limiting and it's based, you know, it can be based on the creatures like, like Mentor of the Meek is a card that lets you draw a card, but it's, it's very, very limiting. Super limiting because you have got to play a bunch of weenies. You have to play a bunch of weenies. Yeah, white tends to like lock you into a strategy. And even with the ramp, like you have land tax or gift of estates. Um, but those cards put the lands in your hands. They don't put them on the battlefield. Yeah. And it only, they only trigger if you have less lands than your opponents, which is not a situation that you want to be in. Unless you don't want them to attack you or something. Sure, yeah. <laughs> And you know we've gotten we've gotten a few cards in recent years to help with these shortcomings, but these are still the weak. White is still the the color with the weakest abilities in these in these two categories. Yep, hands down. <clears throat> yeah, that's why Boros is like. I mean, I would love to build a Boros deck, but there's just not a, a viable commander as I see things. Boros can be fun, but Boros, it's like it can be f- super yeah. fun. Mono white can be super fun, but you know, no matter what color you're playing, if you like get the shaft and you run out of cards, can't really do anything. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another weakness of white is its inability to, or it's it, white has a difficult time recurring creatures on a mass scale. Or recurring lands on a mass scale and the way that it can recur artifacts and enchantments as opposed to other colors like black or green that can do those things very easily Mm -hmm. there's definitely things like there's a lot of targeted um graveyard recursion in white but nothing on a mass scale no not really unless again unless you're playing in those specific lanes like artifact and enchantments yeah, you have you're, to. You're still good with mm-hmm. what we ended there with replenish and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, so that's sort of that's sort of what what I determined were White's biggest weaknesses. You know, I don't know that it has any other really glaring shortcomings. I mean, card draw, mana ramp, those are big ones. They're huge, and I think that's why there's not many others because. <laughs> <laughs> Switch and Commander, those are pretty important to uh, mm-hmm. let you play the game and, and win. Yeah, those are the two things that you want your deck to have. And if yeah. your Commander can do one or both of those, you always have a card in your hand that can uh, advance your game plan. So let's let's talk about some of the mechanics that are sort of synonymous with white. So we've got Lifelink. Lifelink's... Whenever this creature deals damage, you gain that much life. Yeah. So even if you have, like, a a pinger, you'll gain life off of that. Exactly. And then also, like, during combat, if you have, say, I have a five-power creature and you block with a two-toughness creature, my five-power creature still deals five damage to the two-toughness creature, so you still gain the five health, Mm -hmm. even though the other creature is only two-power, or toughness, sorry. Right. Yeah, another uh, very common mechanic in white is vigilance. Yeah. So uh, attacking doesn't cause this creature to tap, mm-hmm. which is what you what the cards used to say before they made it an evergreen mechanic. And white also uh, more commonly has that ability where when a creature attacks, it'll have an act, it'll have a triggered ability where you'll create a token or you'll put a card into play from your hand, and that creature is tapped and attacking. I think that's a very white ability. Yeah, um, like one of the big uh, Brimaz. Brimaz, yeah, that's what, I was, really good what that. I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Um, indestructible, very, very white. The, very a white. lot of creatures have it, and there's also a lot of uh, instant spells that yeah, do that make your creatures unblockable. So, you and know, then even look at Gideon; he gives stuff indestructible too. Yeah, and he's often indestructible himself. Himself, yes. And you know, white. Um, you know, white. A lot of times it wants to win with um, an army of creatures and it has an inability to uh, mass recur those creatures if there's a board wipe. But it does give you the opportunity to keep mana open and in sort of a counterspell type of way make your creatures indestructible. So after a board wipe, 
you are in a position to win the game if you leave that mana open to you know play a card like make a stand yeah <clears throat> or use it as a combat trick to block that as well it's another way you can you can use those those handy instant spells first strike super old mechanic double strike same thing so yeah yeah well not same thing but <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but like double strike um sometimes I, I think there's been times like in games where i've been um just confused about how double strike works like with a creature with trample or unblockable okay. not, not unblockable um uh like lifelink sure yeah um and the thing to remember with like first strike and double strike when you're when you're in combat um there's physically two phases that happen yeah um there's the first strike damage and then there's the regular damage which is the, which is like the double strike i mean that always happens in combat yes but with double strike your creature gets both of those phases yes so if yeah. you like kill a creature with the first strike the first time then you the second hit doesn't go anywhere but if you have the trample um but all the damage is going over whatever goes above and beyond the toughness of the creature that is blocking right or the toughness of the combined creatures that are blocking yes yeah 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 double strike is fantastic good mechanic yeah and you also get you know if you have like a if you have brago um which is a an a, a combat damage trigger then if you give brago double strike you'll get his Ooh. ability twice Ooh boy. so you get to blink everything twice twice and you know if you have activated abilities of those creatures that you can pay for off of the first blink and then you blink them again you know you can get a ton of value that's a very dirtily commander value town or you could do it stacks which um you know i wouldn't advocate for people will hate you but you know people are going to hate you if you take long turns no matter what sure, so yeah. just <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> just play brago fun like me yeah brago super friends <laughs> um exalted is another very white mechanic um can you explain what exalted is Exalted's interesting yeah a lot of things have exalted too though a lot of like non-white yeah 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 fair enough yeah but, but i think of white has the most of them i think white but, or uh, or they're like creatures that have white but they're multicolored creatures or yeah. like you like noble hierarch which is a green creature but you couldn't run it in a in a commander deck that wasn't banned kind of thing when i first started playing magic i picked up like one of those like themed deck things right and i okay. got one that was exalted themed and yeah. it ran nephorox was like the foil that was in the front of the package right and i was like ooh, as your commander <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah exalted so the mechanic works with whenever a creature has exalted um when you're when you attack alone with a creature it gets plus one plus one for every single exalted trigger that you have Okay. So even if the creature itself has exalted, it if it attacks alone, it still gets a, the what? one one from it too. Right. So if all your creatures have exalted, so if we have four creatures with exalted and I attack with only one of them, if it's a two two, it still gets plus four for all the other creatures I have. So then it's a six six. Makes sense. But they have to attack alone. It has to attack alone. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Great for a Voltron strategy for sure. Oh yeah. Uh. So we t we did talk about uh, wrath effects. That's not necessarily. I mean that that's not really a um, mechanic, and neither is this. But uh, white has, I would say, the the best and the most exile effects. Yeah. Single target exile, and also mass exile cards like Day of Judgment or um, that one from Shadows Over Innistrad with Delirium, the sorcery. It is like exile all creatures, but the, but if you have Delirium, you get to put a four four into play. Oh, can't remember. Yeah, like, I don't know what um, that one is. Yeah, I can't remember right now. Uh, I just played it the other night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so those are sort of the the most common mechanics that we see in white. Can you think of any others? Can Can you think of any others? Not off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I got them all. Um, so let's let's talk about some of the tribes that are very common with white angels obviously is uh white's iconic tribe got that sarah angel that's right yeah four four for five vigilance yeah. <laughs> she has vigilance right yes yeah 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 great card yeah white's definitely known for the angels um definitely yeah 
Um, uh, kind of a fun one, the Kithkin. Kithkin, yeah. Very cool. I really love the look of the Kithkin. I mean, I love so much of the art from the Lorwyn yeah. uh, era of magic. I would love to go back to Lorwyn. That'd be uh, cool. And, the, and Tribal. I know we just did Tribal with Ixalan, but... Yeah, I love tribal. Yeah. So I don't really care. <laughs> uh, as long as they don't make for uh, such an aggressive draft format. I like it. If you're going to do tribal, make it real grindy. Like, give me, like, Dominaria draft format, and I will be happy. Dominaria tribal. Yeah, Dominaria tribal. Do, like, Urza tribal. Teferi tribal. Misha tribal. Bring him back. Is he <laughs> dead? <laughs> You can, um, even if he is, just sure. like make some sort we of ways in the story, yeah, make some though. sort yeah. of paradox engine and bring him back to life. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> um, humans, obviously, very white. All very the white, soldiers, yeah. all the knights, all the warriors. Yep. All all the one ones. I think um, I was reading something about the power toughness of creatures and its relation to real world, um, you know, beasts, <laughs> and. <laughs> It, it would it sort of translated that like a regular human person would be like a one one or a zero one so you know it makes sense that white would have all those one one tokens at that then that they would be yeah sure they would be people or you know <laughs> humanoid uh sultari was also a very white creature type back in uh back in tempest they were i don't the, think i've seen a sultari they sort of look like um they sort of look like grays, like um, tall grays. And what is a grays? Uh oh, like a like a gray. They're just like aliens. So oh. like the um, <laughs> like yeah, like at the you know the extraterrestrials, Area Fifty One, all that. Yeah, that's what they sort of look like. And they were just creatures that had shadow. So shadow is a, a sort yeah. of a bygone uh, ability where creatures with shadow could only be blocked by creatures with shadow but creatures with shadow could only block creatures with shadow so they were good until you were up against a board of regular creatures that didn't have shadow and then you couldn't do anything to deal with them there are 10 soltari total in magic does it give you the breakdown of the percentages of colors uh <laughs> are you doing the percentage they're they're all white except for uh soltari gorillas which is red and white. Oh, cool. Okay, so they're all white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a deep cut. I just like the uh, I like the way that they look. They're they're very cool looking. <laughs> Sorry, this this ability on the Saltari gorillas. What is it? Uh, so you pay zero. The next time Saltari gorillas would deal combat damage to an opponent this turn, it deals damage to target creature instead. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Actually, that's like that's a great way to deal with problem creatures when you're just running an all shadow deck which is sure, yeah. that i did when i got into magic cool yeah bad strategy <laughs> well i think if you can get the face damage in you usually would yeah for yeah. sure <laughs> uh, spirits are another very white tribe yeah a lot of spirits a lot of spirit tokens rebels very white the like the standard of mercadian mask was just dominated by by rebels what's that uh it's that rebel commander lynn lynn something i can think of it i should have my i should have my phone out it doesn't matter uh soldiers also that that's sort of like human soldiers that that's usually what we see human knights yeah and clerics clerics are also there's a lot of black clerics but it's pretty much black white uh clerics yeah, it's pretty black white yeah mm-hmm Definitely. Um, I did look up some a little bit of white trivia for this episode, and uh, I'll do it for the episode, other episodes as well, if I can find it. Cool. I am interested. So uh, the white mana symbol was changed after Ice Age. So if you go back before Ice Age and you look at the white mana symbol on cards, it's a little bit different, and the sun is just kind of less defined and kind of squiggly and shitty looking. <laughs> It's a shitty squiggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still, you know, you still know it's a white card. Yeah. Um, and white was the first color to contain a card with an alternate win condition in the form of divine intervention. And I will oh. I will read divine intervention. This is actually a very expensive card because it's only printed in Legends. So it's six and two white for an enchantment. Divine intervention enters the battlefield with two intervention counters on it. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an intervention counter from divine intervention. If there are no intervention counters on it, the game is a draw. Oh, the game's a draw. Yes, this is the only card that results in the game being a draw. And this card is legal in Commander. So, if I may, uh, you know, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I have to say that I think that this card goes against what the rules committee says is the spirit of Commander, which is to have a good time. And I don't think a card that ends with the game being a draw results in players having a good time right because part, now nobody's won nobody's won and that's part of the game somebody does win right we are trying to kill each other with commander you know it's a social game we're having fun but at the end of the day somebody you know everyone except you ideally has to die <laughs> <laughs> not but literally way, of course no, nobody has to die it's just a draw yeah, so, you know, and this is a very expensive card, and that's probably why it doesn't see a lot of play, but I, think I would... It also doesn't see play because you want to win, not draw. Yes, but if their aim is that the games are quote-unquote fun, yeah. then why isn't a card like Divine Intervention banned when a card like Paradox Engine is banned or Biorhythm is banned? Um, just, Just a little food for thought. You know, I'm not sure that they're considering the vastness of the the meta. If you can even call Commander a meta, it's so it's so vast. You know, we can talk about CEDH and that meta, but it just seems silly to me that a card like this is legal, and they just ban two cards that end games. <laughs> <laughs> Paradox Engine was seeing play though, and they have the stats on that. Yeah. somehow <laughs> <laughs> yeah where the hell are like, they getting what? those stats anyway <laughs> it's people complaining on reddit like <laughs> yeah i wouldn't be like... surprised man i'll tell you what i bet i really wouldn't be surprised if that's where they get the majority of their information from is is reddit message boards like i'm sure there's um some info that you can get from mtgo in terms of what, what cards see play and stuff yep but, but uh, other than that like how much commanders played on mtgo i think a lot Really? I think so. Is there enough that like you could go on there and just catch a game? Oh, yeah. Really? I didn't think it was that popular on MTGO. Yeah, because we, we have some friends that even play on there still, I think. Because like, Rob and Matt were really into playing Commander on there. Yeah, they were. And I mean, Will would play tons. Yeah. yeah, I like playing with Will. He's a very efficient player. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, yeah Will's great. I miss him. <laughs> Where are you, Will? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will, get in touch with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, also, Will, rate and review the show on iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> you like us, right? <laughs> um, a, a, one more piece of white trivia. The highest CMC white cards to date are Soul Scour and Storm Herd, both costing 10 mana. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, I think. So what do they do? Soul Scour is 7 and 3 white for a sorcery. Destroy all Narn artifact permanents. Ooh. I didn't know about this card. Until I was looking up this trivia, but like I was saying about SRAM, you put this in here, you know, SRAM's probably already indestructible, so you're just going to win that game. Because you have a bunch of artifacts, too. All lands, gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty interesting card. It is, really. And you know what? It's like 25 cents. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. But it's from Darksteel, so get one of those Darksteel foils because yeah. they are beautiful, and it's probably like... 50 cents to yeah to maybe, two bucks maybe yeah. it's not expensive this card i've never seen this card play <laughs> <laughs> might be the 10 mana casting cost possibly in white <laughs> <laughs> and storm herd which i've seen played a lot it's eight and two white for a sorcery put x one one white pegasus creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield where x is your life total actually wanted to look up how much pegasus tokens were because I oh, yeah. don't know if this was from a standard set. Um, I can find that part out for you. If it was from a standard set? Yeah. How do you spell Pegasus? P-E-G. I don't think it was from a standard set. It's not expensive. The token's not expensive, people. I, I thought it was expensive, but it's it's not. Um, it was in Guild Pact. Oh, oh, man. Those are cheap boxes, let me tell you. Did you go pick one up? 
Yeah, you should. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> that is bad. But save your save up a little more money and get a box of uh, like Modern Horizons or something. Something that's gonna like re- retain some value over time. Yeah. Get one of those foil first slivers, which is actually like close to like fifteen bucks now. I'm surprised at how much it dropped. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I'm like waiting until it's like much cheaper to to throw in, in my deck. Some up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's all the trivia I have, and I mean, you know, we could do a whole episode about trivia, but um, you know, we don't want to keep these people guessing. So that's pretty much. It can be a thing for a later time. Well, we'll do trivia on the other colors. Yeah, yeah. But that is going to do it for this episode of the show. This is this has been a this has been a fun episode. I liked it. The color pie. Yeah, I always I always find this stuff very interesting and and really how it's changed over time and I always like to think of that cycle of one mana spells from Alpha with Lightning Bolt, Ancestral Recall, Healing Salve, Giant Growth, and what was the black one? One black to get three mana. Oh, Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Thank you. Um, and how white whites was just trash yeah it was like, just those the, are good cards it was just there they are except, except for healing self yeah and it's just the white still getting the shaft you know even ancestral recall got banned in modern yeah 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 recently unbanned like a year ago or so now but yeah do you mean ancestral vision oh yeah because ancestral recall was like it's, never le- but it's yeah. ancestral recalls banned in commander yeah um well because it's one blue draw three cards that's kind of broken that is broken but I don't know. I don't even think the moxes should be banned. I think th- I think part of the reason why those cards are banned is the barrier to own those Get cards. One. Yeah, because like the dual lands aren't banned. Exactly, and those are very expensive cards. And the moxes, like you can play, you know, you can play zero. You can play Chrome Mox on turn one, and yeah, you have to discard a card, but it's not a big deal. You can play like Lion's Eye Diamond. You have to discard your hand, but you know, by then you've probably already played out a few mana rocks Anyways, and a land, so. so you don't care. Yeah. So, you know, I think those cards in particular are banned because they're really expensive and hard to get. And I think prob- probably, uh, hot take, if Sol Ring wasn't printed in every commander deck, in every no. pr- product, that it would probably be banned too. Yeah. Um, Maybe not. Like Mana Vault and... and uh, uh, Mana Crypt aren't banned, but those have seen reprints. In yeah, they get reprints. In the last so. few years. So, like, maybe Soul Ring, like, limited reprints. Maybe it would be, like, a pretty pricey card. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would be a lot. M- because it's printed every year on mass, and it's and by the time the next Commander product rolls around, it's, like, a $5 card again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it would be much more expensive if it was only printed in, like, Master sets at, at rares. Speaking of which, did you see that promo for uh the the judge promo for whatever uh magic fest for the new soul ring they gave it like new art and oh that yeah, looks really cool <clears throat> i did not see that one it's a very cool but yeah like we were saying we're gonna wrap up this episode of turn one soul ring talking about the judge promo soul ring next week on the show we're gonna be talking about budget cards our favorites and the best ones in the commander format uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us and ask us any questions, you can find us at turn one soul ring the podcast at gmail.com on Instagram at turn one soul ring underscore the podcast. And you can find me on Instagram at command beacon. So, you know, please send us uh, emails and, you know, just with some feedback, uh, the show topics you'd like to hear us talk about, anything like that. And you can find us on google play soundcloud and youtube and apple podcasts and if you're really feeling generous you can rate and review us on apple podcasts five stars please and we're also doing our july giveaway right now of three core 2020 packs you can find the uh, the entry information for that on our instagram page uh, it should be somewhere in there if you scroll down. We'll be announcing the winner of that giveaway on August 1st, at which point we'll be starting our September giveaway. And that is all that we have for you guys today. 
this has been a bit of a shorter episode. A little I, shorter. I think they're gonna. I always feel self conscious when it's like a super long episode, but we never get any complaints. So it's. Just, I don't. I think, I think people we're are good. people, and that's the great thing about on demand. You know, if people, it's too long. You're just like, well, I'm done. Yeah. Or I'll yeah. just I'll finish it later. You know, I gotta yeah. get back to work or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, it's just I like to think people listening to this while they're like drifting off to sleep. Because <laughs> that's that's what I do with a lot of podcasts. Oh, okay. Know? So. Uh, and then I just start from the beginning when I get up. You know? Yeah. It's just like. You hear the information twice. Maybe you'll remember some of yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe I'll retain a bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just want to thank you guys for listening. And we'll talk to you again uh, next week. Thank- thanks, everyone, for listening. And remember, always read the card. It explains the card. Yeah. All right. Go get them, Tigers. Turn one soul ring.